don't worry, that's the last slide you'll see. Let's do some straight database talk, no slides. After creating an index, query response time and elapsed time is improved a lot. The query is running good, but causing very high CPU spikes now. What else should be done to reduce the CPU spikes? Or is it really needed to fix the CPU spikes? Let me start with something a bit controversial here. CPU spikes are a good thing. What's happened here is because we've used an index and probably assumingly we've now turned away from a full table scan for this particular query, a full table scan is most likely doing direct reads. It's reading from disk straight to the PGA to the client. What this means is you're probably not hurting the CPU greatly don't get me wrong, IO still burns CPU. But what you're seeing there is your query performance is slow because of the IO infrastructure. That is the binding factor here, or the, the limiting factor. Now that we're using an index, generally the most common blocks you'll see in the buffer cache are index blocks, both branch blocks and leaf blocks, because so many applications tend to use index blocks. What this means is, is a vast majority of this query's performance now, or results, are being served out of the buffer cache. Buffer cache are memory reads, and the surefire way to consume CPU on an Oracle database is to do buffer gets. It's probably the leading cause of CPU consumption. This is not a bad thing. CPU consumption is the aim in a Oracle database. Don't get me wrong, the idea always is to have optimal code first. You optimize first such that a query is using the least amount of resources. But once you've reached that sort of goal, then what you want to do is actually use as much CPU as possible because that effectively is the amount of load you can accommodate. I'm always blown away. I worked for years at many places where there were metrics along the lines of we want to keep our Oracle database at 60% CPU always, you know, no more than 60% CPU because of that paranoia about needing headroom. Let's be real here. What really is CPU for any customer, whether it's on-premises or cloud? CPU is money. You get charged by the CPU when you have Oracle on-premises. You get charged predominantly by the CPU when you have Oracle in cloud. If you're saying, I'm never going to go above 60% CPU, what you're really doing there is paying 40% extra for resources you're not using. For me, the ideal server runs all the time hot because that means you're using exactly the right amount of money that you've paid for your Oracle facilities. The joy of having Oracle on cloud is that you can run really, really hot. And then when you do need that headroom, you can simply blip it up a bit and still run hot. I'm a fan of use the CPU you have. What do we say? Yeah, you can't bank it. You can't put away a surplus CPU and then call on it later. It doesn't work that way. You use it or you lose it. So I'm a big fan of running machines hot because of the things of hyper-threading and cores you need to be a little bit careful here because the definition of a CPU running hot might not necessarily be 100%. Often a CPU will be reporting through the various operating system facilities that say running at say 70% when in reality it's actually maxed out because of the way of you know, hyper-threading and cores work. But once you find that, that moment where you think, yep, workload slows down after this threshold, then yeah, your aim is always to run close, as close to that threshold safely as possible because that means you're getting the maximum return on your investment. And ultimately, any kind of IT resources are about getting the best bang for your buck. It's good that your CPUs are running hot. That's the objective here. <laughs>